Hi everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilting Window. I'm so excited. Today we're gonna make a project from our new book, Pillow Talk. And it is just perfect in time because guess what? There is a little pillow fight going out there and we need our pillows ready, set, go. I chose this pillow called Dot 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 and this pillow has a beautiful circle on it. I would like with this pillow to show you how to applique a circle onto the background. I'm gonna show you three te techniques, fusible, machine, and hand applique. You can choose whichever one you like and get to it and make a lovely pillow for your household. Or maybe like me, get addicted to it and make a whole quilt out of it. So let's proceed. In our quilting basket, I have variety of things that are good for all different appliques. After we go through them, choose the ones that you like uh, for the technique that you're going to do and then you can purchase them on our website at laundrybasketquilts.com. Of course, we're gonna need the pillow, uh, pillow talk book because in the book we're gonna find a pattern not only for the pillow that I'm making today but also for 25 other pillows. So this could be fun to learn a new techniques. So pillow talk book gives us all the directions and the size of the circle that we needed. In my quilting basket, I also have beautiful threads from Aurofil and I really like them because they're nice for machine applique, fusible applique, or if you want it, you can use them for hand applique and I'm gonna show you which thread I'm going to use. And that's um, one of my favorite threads. If you don't wanna get the package, get the 2370. This color, I have one open right here, just blends and go with everything you possibly can uh, desire. It is perfect for any colors. So those are our low threads. I have needles and we're going to use for fusible applique, non-stick needle, for machine applique, Microtex needle, for our hand applique, we're gonna use the hand sewing needles. I kind of like those and they're very fun and exciting and they work good for me. So I hope you would enjoy them as well. I have some other things in my basket, like those beautiful threads from Wonderful. If you want an extra low detail and extra color, you can always purchase threads like that to add a little bit more rainbow into a beautiful project and your quilt. If you don't want to cut your own circle for fusible applique, we have kits for the pillow. So you can purchase the kit and everything in it is already pre-cut, ready, set, go for you. But today I would like to show you how to make your own circle, cut everything for yourself. And one of the things that we also gonna use it is our glue. So I'm gonna put this right on the table close to me because I would like to use this when I have to secure my pieces in place. I have some embroidery needle for a little bit of basting, so they're gonna come handy. And oh, I threw in our basket a little Creative Grits ruler. This ruler is six and a half by three and a half, and I like that ruler because our background fabric is three and a half by three and a half, so I can quickly cut it with that cute little small ruler. Let's put those things to the side and make a little bit space for ourselves. First thing, we're gonna need fabric. And I didn't have those in a basket because I'm hoping that today's project, you're gonna dive into maybe your stash and pick up some scraps, some exciting fabric and work from that. But if you need a little guide and need a little bit extra color, this is what I like to do. I take my linen texture bundle and use this as my color guide. Then from that bundle, I go ahead and from my stash of scraps, I pick up all different fabrics. And notice what happened right here. When I have to get some yellows, I pull it right from uh, my bundle and then everything nicely match and I have a lot of the linen texture in the quilt as well as in my pillow because it allows me to give a, a direct hue of that color. So notice how pretty those colors are and then you can use this as your guide. I also use this bundle and cut a one piece of every single one of the 60 swatches that are in here because I want my quilt to be colorful and scrappy. And this quilt behind me is made from traditional fabric, linen texture, modern fabric, and just about anything and anything 
everything that I can find in my stash on our household. So those are the fabrics that you can start with it. If you would like to, those bundles are available on our website. We're gonna need a light for our backgrounds. So the lights for the backgrounds, the three and a half little squares, and you can just grab any ones you have it in your stash. And I basically uh, use, uh, uh, lay them out and make sure that they're similar tone, but I have some lighter one and some a little bit darker. It gives me a little bit more movement to the quilt. So that's what I did for the quilt as well for the pillow. Let's start with the most simple way to applique what it's fusible applique. For fusible applique, we're going to use fusible webbing. And I want to introduce something new to you. It's called Hot Fix Adhesive. And this is one of the newest fusible webbings on the market. And I really like it. It's quite nice. It works very nice. If you don't want to stitch around the edges, you don't have to do it. It stays really nice onto your background and also doesn't goog up your needle. So that one may be your new one to purchase and try it. We will have it on our website. I take a piece of fusible webbing, I place it right in front of me, then I'm gonna grab a, a pattern from our book. Let's open that pattern right there. Oh, look at this, it's waiting. I'm going to place my fusible webbing right over and gently with a pencil, I'm going to trace it, okay? But check this out. If I'm doing something like this, and I need to trace 36 or 360 or 3060, you want to have a template that you can quickly trace from it. And I noticed that our sweet men template circle is that exact size that I need. So guess what? I'm going to just do that, use my circle from our last class and trace it to my fusible webbing. Once I traced it, I'm going to go ahead and place it onto the desired piece of fabric. Before I um, cut it on a line, I first rough cut it, leaving at least quarter inch around the edges. Now I place it onto my fabric and iron it. As soon as I iron it, I'm ready to cut. And I want to show you something that I like to do. As soon as I finish cutting, uh, or finish pressing, I'm gonna cut it. And this is the trick. When I cut, I like to take nice, smooth, long cuts. Notice that long cut that I'm doing. And I'm cutting right on that line. Oh, this is gonna be just beautiful. I'm cutting and moving along. I don't wanna cut with the tips of my scissors. I'm cutting with the pivot of my scissors right here to get a nice smooth cut. Nice smooth cuts. Ooh, this is moving along very well. And guess what? In no time, you can have one, two, five, thirty, and you're gonna have enough to put those circles right into your beautiful quilt. Look at this. As soon as you finish, you're gonna go ahead, crease a corner, pull it away, take a background. Let me grab a nice little background. I have one right here for me. I have a background right here and I'm gonna center up, place my circle right here and iron it beautiful. You're gonna ask me where is that center of that circle? The easiest way to do this is crease it, crease it, notice, now I have a little X right here and then just with one gentle crease and another gentle crease i center things up match the creases look at it match the creases here 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 and i'm ready to center things up after making one two three of them you're gonna get the idea and i tell you uh making a lot of them make you do things very well and also you're gonna get a, like a feel for it it's like uh, dancing on playing piano after you do few of those you know the steps you're not gonna even have to think about where that center is you space it really nice to giving a little distance from the outside press it 
and now you can use those beautiful threads that we have talked about it to stitch around the edges or don't stitch at all or use invisible thread and hide the stitches with the invisible thread another way of making the circles it is to do it with machine applique so let's talk about how we do machine applique we're gonna need a background fabric and we're gonna need some fabrics for our circles we're gonna start by choosing a freezer paper i know you normally use it to cook and wrap your meat and put it in the freezer but i use sometimes my freezer paper to make my templates for my machine and my hand applique so what i did is i took a freezer paper again i'm gonna need my design and you can either trace it from the book or you can use that wonderful little template template and all that I'm gonna do is I just traced it just like this this time with my paper scissors I'm going to go ahead and cut it exactly on the lines exactly on the line so this technique is going to be machine applique machine applique and we're gonna turn the edge under when you cutting exactly on the line you have to make sure nice smooth nice cuts because when you wrap the fabric around the edges you want those smooth lines to be beautiful on the outside of your circle you don't want to have low bumps on the outside of your circle so nice smooth cuts why am i using my uh, paper scissors because I'm cutting a paper so I don't want to use my best scissors for cutting a paper I want to use my just paper scissors all right I just cut my circle just like this and the next step what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place my circle onto the wrong side of my fabric and notice freezer paper has a math side and a shiny side and I am going to place the shiny side down with the dry iron I'm gonna iron it on and this freezer paper is gonna stick into the beautiful fabric that I have selected I have one right here ready set go for us look at this the freezer paper is stuck do you see and now I'm gonna grab my wonderful Paper, uh, fabric scissors and I'm gonna cut it around the edges keeping at least quarter inch around the edge just like this I like to give myself like a nice big quarter inch I'm not being shy on it at all why because I'm gonna need a room to base the edges to pull them in to create a beautiful turn edge for my machine applique okay and I just rough cut it oh this looks great perfect let's clean this up to the side the next part I'm gonna take a thread and I'm gonna use a yellow thread so you can see it and uh, in the video but also I like to use a little thicker thread when I'm basting why because I can hold on to it much easier my hands are getting older my eyes are getting older so having a little thicker thread that really helps and I am using that wonderful needle that we talked about it let me pull that needle up oh, it's right here this embroidery needle why am I using the embroidery needle because it has a nice big eye so I can easily put my thread into it and now I'm gonna baste it Remember, start by pushing your needle from the right side to the wrong side of fabric. That is gonna come handy later. And now we're gonna gently baste it just about every quarter inch. I'm gonna pull a stitch, see what I'm doing, in and out. If you have to do just one stitch at a time, just like this, hold on, just like this, let's do it you don't have to rush you don't have to do five stitches at once you know if you feel comfortable and you've done it a few times and their circle is going to be lifting up but don't stress about it just keep going around and make a little basting do you see what i'm doing nice basting baste one stitch after the other 
thinking about all the wonderful circles that I'm going to do. And many times when we travel in a car, I like to prepare a bunch of circles and I just paste them in the as I'm riding in a car with my husband on a little road trip and he's visiting and telling me all the stories. I can just sit there and baste one after the other or maybe in the evening when you like to watch your favorite TV show, you want to do one or two or three circles at evening in no time. You're going to have a lot of nice circles to applicate them to a background. So look at this. We're almost in those few minutes. We almost have gone around and now I'm coming to the end and I want to again push to the right side of the fabric. So both little threads, the beginning and the end, are right here on the outside. And look at this. I'm gently gonna pull it. Look what happened. How sweet. I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna pull it a little bit more. Oh, this looks great. Look what happened. I almost wanna like fold my paper in there, but not really, I'm pulling really nice and tight. It took all the edges so nice. Oh, this is gonna be wonderful. Now I'm gonna go to my ironing board and with an iron, I'm gonna iron those edges right down. Oh, this is great. I just have one already ironed for you, prepare. Look at how nice. You can have a bunch of those circles made. All the edges looks wonderful. And we are ready for our next step, what it is going to be a machine applique. All right, so I'm going now. Put, oh, there's a little thread, got it. I'm going to put my circle in the center, just like this. I'm going to tuck all of the threads underneath, okay, just for the few minutes. If my circle is moving around, instead of using pins, I'm going to use a touch of my glue from Soul Line Fabric Glue, just in the center, just so it doesn't move. This is a small project. And now I'm gonna prepare my machine so I can do machine applique around the edges. So I'm gonna start by choosing the right thread. If you wanna show off the threads, then yes, use a beautiful decorative thread. I want to hide my stitches so I'm going to match if it's a blue circle I'm gonna choose a beautiful thread from my Aurifil threads and I'm gonna choose it one in blue and this denim blue is stunning to put it right around the edges so I would have used this thread right there in my bobbin I'm gonna put a cotton thread and I like the 2370 that way we cannot see any of the stitches when they pop up to the top now I'm gonna use my macro text needle for this one, I'm gonna use a macro text needle. For our fusible applique, if we were stitching, I would have used that non-stick needle. So that was the first one that we did. But now I'm gonna use the macro text needle and I'm gonna take an extra little swatch and start by setting up my sewing machine for a small zigzag. And I put a white thread in my sewing machine so that way you can see the stitch right here. I'm making a small zigzag, one in width, one in length. So that's where I start. That little zigzag is positioned onto the edge and go back, onto the edge and go back. Once I have this set on, then I'm gonna go ahead and practice and stitch my wonderful circle, starting right here, stitch all the way around. And I already did one right here. Look at the stitches. I'm going to pull it back. Can you see a little bit of that blue beautiful thread? I matched it up. Oh, this is look wonderful. Then I will turn it to the back and from the back, I'm going to gently make a little cut just like this because guess what? That paper is still inside. That paper has been pushing that needle only to the edge. You don't want to stitch on that paper, just onto the edge. And now I'm gonna put my fingers in there and try to get that little paper right out of there. Oh, come on now. It's one to stay in there, but now we're gonna pull it really nicely out because we don't want that paper. And did you notice how I made the little cut on the bias? 
because I wanted to open nice so I can get that circle out. Once I got that circle out, I'm just gonna beautifully press my low block and I have my first circle done. If fusible applique is not for you, if machine applique is not for you, if you love to sit down in the evening like me and gently stitch a low circle around the edges by hand, let's do that this way. Just like for machine applique, we're gonna prepare our circle using freezer paper, pull this low string down, tuck it in here, place it onto the background, but this time, we're gonna take a beautiful hand applique needle, okay, beautiful needle. We're gonna make a little knot in the end, just like this, and I like to double knot it, okay? Now, you can use a little glue if you would like to, to secure your circle in place, or just hold it. Notice that how I'm holding. I'm resting everything onto my hand, and I'm just looking at this cute little edge, and from the back, I'm going to come up with my needle, pull it through it, gently tuck it so it's secure, and with a tiny little one of an eight inch stitches, I'm gonna stitch with a slip stitch all the way around the edges of their little thread, all the way around the edges, practicing a little applique. My mom loves this technique the most. She is just crazy about it, how easy it comes together because you use the freezer paper as your template, you roll the edges around this. This is hand applique, but it's not needle turn applique. Needle turn, you would have been turning the edges with a needle. Here, we're just stitching by hand and having some fun and notice it, how nice the stitches look. Oh, this will look wonderful. Look at from the back, look at from the front, try to keep your stitches as nice as straight, nice and straight, so that way your project looks just beautiful. Oh, this is so much fun. Perfect way of learning hand applique. As soon as you finish stitching around, you're gonna double stitch to knot it the end of your thread, cut it, just like we cut it right here, remove the freezer paper and move on to your next circle. Thank you so much for stopping by today and quilting with me. I had so much fun to make a pillow with you and teach you a little bit about fusible hand and machine applique. Make sure you visit our website for updates on our pillow fight. Oh, it's going to be so much fun and I cannot wait to see some of the projects you make from our Pillow Talk book. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website at laundrybasketquilts.com. Happy quilting!